you would like to explore the world or you want some travel inspirations. In both cases, you are welcome here. This series of episodes is called The Travel Talks. And I'm here today with my friend Dimo. We talked about many things together and I'm sure it's gonna give you tons of ideas. So let's jump on it for part one. Let's go! Hey, once again. <laughs> hey, so, how have you been? Yeah, I'm good, I'm good. How about you? How was your day? Really well. Uh, really, really well. Uh, did some positive stuff in terms of my work and mm -hmm. just got back home. Um, I'm thinking where I'm going to watch the game actually afterwards. Uh, but anyways, that is for for another day and time. Uh, if yeah, if you if you want, we can we can start with uh, maybe can, telling. I'm gonna say my everybody. I'm sorry, gonna tell. Wait, we're gonna tell our stories. We're gonna I'm gonna tell my yeah. story first. Yep. You know, I know, a lot of people are watching the replay, so um, so it's all good. Um, yep. So I'm gonna introduce myself first. So my name is Alvin. I am. Um, I am. Uh, I grew up in France, in a town called Reims, which is the Champagne town. And I grew up there, and um, I had my teenage life, and and I started working at eighteen, and I was fine. <clears throat> but then, but then at twenty two, um, a few years later, I started to feel you know not good anymore. I started to feel. Um, depressed and sad, and there were things that were going going wrong in this on uh, this stage. And then um, I just decided to stop and to do to stop working. So I had quit my job and I started traveling. I started to do my own stuff. I was four years ago. Today, welcome everybody who is joining. Welcome, welcome, um, Paul Antoine. Hey welcome guys. everyone. And um, it, 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 was, it was such such an amazing journey. It opened my mind completely to, to start traveling. And um, there was so much stuff that happened and, um, and, and so much stories to tell. Obviously, I've been next to your country, which is Bulgaria. I was very close to it. And I have some, something that I'm going to talk about a little bit later in the video, in the live. So... Um, Can I ask you a question here? And now I came back. So I traveled again to UK, to Australia, and then now I live in France. Yes, go for it. Yep. Uh, I just wanted to ask you, what were your... I know you haven't visited Bulgaria yet, but have you heard anything about the country? Doesn't matter if it's good or bad, but I think this is going to be interesting. So have you heard Absolutely. anything? <laughs> Absolutely. <clears throat> So what I heard from Bulgaria is um, that I was going to be killed if I go there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's not a very good. If you go <laughs> at worst, if you go to Bulgaria, Bulgaria. <laughs> <laughs> so um, nothing well, positive, not at all. This is what people from the countries around Bulgaria told me, because I've been traveling in the Balkan countries. Such as um, such as um, um, Croatia, um, Bosnia, Montenegro, Albania, very close as well. Uh, Greece, well, Greece, not uh, well, Albania, Greece, not Balkan countries. But it's pretty close, but um, but every time I talk to people there and I ask them, you know, about the countries around, like what, where, where should I go? Where shouldn't I go? And all the time they told me, don't, don't go there, don't go to Bulgaria. Welcome everybody who's joining, welcome, welcome, be friends, family. Yeah. So, so was, it some, was it some Greek guy who told you that? I mean, we're kind of, although we are neighbors, we're not exactly in the best relationship possible. Yeah, why, by the way? Like, what happened for that? I have no idea. Uh, well, I don't know if it goes uh, back in the maybe 
a thousand years ago when they actually, Bulgaria uh, was part of Greece because... Uh, oh, really? They managed, yeah, to overtake the country, basically. So there is a bit of a backstory there. I don't think it's uh, in regards to that, but some of them are quite easygoing, which, which I'm certain you've experienced as well, because mm, I've been to Greece, obviously. It's, it's very close by. And some of the people there are really, really nice. And you can, you can go on a, and talk to them uh, for a whole lot of different subjects. But, but still, some of them are like, when they hear Bulgarian, a lot of uh, a lot of gypsies actually uh, from Bulgaria mm. go to go to work there, and yeah. it's a funny story actually. But um, one of my friends uh, was there maybe a week ago, and mm -hmm. one of those Greek guys that he was staying at uh, told him, "How are you Bulgarian? You can't be Bulgarian. Bulgarian, so gypsies." <laughs> he was like. Okay, yeah, they're Bulgarian, but <laughs> I'm also Bulgarian, so yeah. They yeah, yeah, I get the best I've heard impression. About, I've heard about um, 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 people seeing uh, foreigners in uh, in Bulgaria. I heard that too. Yeah, but, but I think to be honest, we talked about worth way. visiting. Sorry, uh, it's still worth visiting, and I'm sure that it will get on your path soon. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, you know, every time I went to a different country, <clears throat> every time I went to a new country, um, I was surprised to see that it wasn't what I expected, first of all. And second, um, what people told me about how the country is was actually pretty wrong. Like, let's be honest, like so many times, I even felt safer in the country where people told me that I'm going to be killed than, than before. The country I was before. It was just like, so crazy. <laughs> well, except yeah. when I was in Egypt. In Egypt? Egypt uh, yeah, I went to Egypt. In Egypt, uh, now, um, I had kind of the dollar, dollar bill in my uh, forehead, you know? Really? Yeah, yeah. Money uh, in my forehead. Definitely. So this is not uh, tea with Gary V. It's tea with um, <laughs> Demo and Alvin. Did, did you catch yeah. up tea yesterday? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. I did. Uh, I'm a pretty good I'm, day. I'm looking, uh, watching uh, every day. I watch the Gary V's content. It's amazing. It's amazing. And by the way, <clears throat> he talked about something very interesting today. Welcome, Vikings. Um, so he 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 talked about. Um, uh, lazy t la teachers that are telling students that you are that students are lazy when they're not interested. Did yeah. you catch this one? I yeah, felt like it was amazing because when I was um, when I was younger at school, I was usually the kind of guy that were a little bit distracted easily, you know, and what it wasn't like I wasn't that bad, but I wasn't good, you know. I was like just like enough to go to the next class, you know, the next year, yeah. just, just enough to pass something. And I was just not interested. I felt, felt very bored, you know? I feel like uh, it's, it's, in, it's interesting. Some, some, only a few things are interesting, but most of it is like bullshit, you know? What was your favorite subject? Was it geography? Yeah, I like geography. I like geography. I like um, sport. <laughs> sport. That's nice. That's real nice. Um, what else? I like um, hmm. not mathematics. I hate. Um, Me too. Actually, I I was okay with English, but the fact is that the teachers were teaching English in such a way that it's so boring that I wasn't trusted. But the way it was taught, I just felt like this is uh, this is not for me, you know. I'm gonna I, and I, later on, I took 
a private teacher to teach me English. Like when I was working, I spent two hours a week to um, um, to be in a, you know in a in a private class. Well, there was like there was a team, a group of people, but I was I took one year, one year or two years, I think one year, and then I learned more than I've ever learned my entire life. You know. Well, it turned out quite good. I must admit that. Yeah, thank you. Well, this is the beginning, and then, um, and then after I started traveling, because with these basics, I was comfortable, um, confident enough to start traveling. So then after that, I started traveling, and I, you know, my English improved on. Yeah, of course, because uh, practice makes perfect. After all, uh, when you started absolutely getting to know the language by using it, of course, you're going to get get a lot better than it. Um, I think that uh, at times uh, I've struggled with that because I know that I'm not awful at, uh, at speaking, but I've had the problem of overjudging myself at times. Mm -hmm. So if I mispronounce the word, uh, word or um, I stuttered a bit, uh, all of this was affecting my my communication skills, which which really sucked because when you're overjudging yourself, overanalyzing all the time, nothing uh, nothing good ever comes out of it. Absolutely, and especially this comes from the fact that you um, maybe care too much about what other people think, or maybe yeah. you are not good enough, or you try to be perfect all all the time, and I. I I literally have been through this, and this is um, um, by staying in this state, it just never ends. You know, it's like there's no way out if you uh, keep thinking that way. But just you know, I start to um, do do not worry about what people think and just do my things. I know I'm gonna be judged. I know I'm gonna be criticized. I know I'm gonna suck. But I do it, and, and um, the more I do it, the less I'm going to suck, and the less and the less and the less. At some point, I'm going to be like, I'm, I'm, I suck just a little bit now. <laughs> you know, not but that much, just a little bit. Uh, what did help you uh, get to that mindset uh, of, I don't care about that, I'm just going to do my thing, and I might suck at it at first, but... I'm going to be better. Absolutely. So <clears throat> this came from um, having done a lot of mistakes, having like, I remember a few years ago, I wanted to do, I wanted to do something, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I was like, I'm going to taste a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And then every time I try something, it was just an idea. So I wasn't passionate about it. And, um, and I thought that because I started this, I had to do it, like really do it completely. But then, but then it was just, you know, a step, a step further in my confidence state of my uh, state of today. So I tried different stuff, but at the end, I kind of felt I, and even now I kind of feel like I don't commit to anything. I don't commit to anything, but it's okay, you know? Like, I tried different things, I failed, I gave up in some projects of mine, even recently, but it taught me things. It taught me things, and, um, uh, but, but I was also caring a lot about perfection. That's the thing. Yeah. So first of all, I didn't have the passion when I was working in, in, in London, for example, in a, a marketing company, I didn't have the passion to be going there. It was a direct sales company, you know, this kind of special environment. When I wanted to do a music project, I stopped as well because I wasn't passionate either. But then I started something else and I was looking for perfection. But then as soon as I started, I stopped, you know, and you know, that's perfection doesn't mean you any like any good thing in the beginning, literally. Yeah. 
of course. Uh, and it's, uh, there is more to it as well. Because when you're, sometimes uh, perfection is just an excuse. We use it as an excuse. Absolute. Okay, yeah, I've started um, this. I'm not perfect at it. I think I'm going to drop it completely. And then maybe I'll come back to it. But you never will because uh, it's you not what you yeah. do. You, yeah, you give up on that thing. Definitely. You never, you never uh, activate. It's too late, kind of. It's yeah. too late. Can you hear me correctly, Agda? It's okay? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, it's definitely if you stop something. And especially, I think this is, this is, this is, and, and Gary Vee tell, tell us a lot of times, it's like you, the parents, our parents, our friends, our families, these are the ones that we, um, we, we can focus on what they're going to think of us the most, you know? People that we don't know, it's kind of okay because we don't know them. Our closest yeah. friends, our closest, you know, we, we love them all. We love our best friends and I love them, you know? I love my family, I love my parents, but I don't want to be next to them right now because I know that I'm going to have some, you know, toxic um, emotions. So I don't want that. So I avoid as much as possible. This is my choice, you know. I avoid as yeah. much as possible. Even to, I want to love them the best way. And the best way is for, for the moment to avoid, you know. It's kind of extreme, but this is my way to do no, it. No, I, I actually completely understand you. I mean, uh, I'm more or less in the same kind of situation, at least with my father. So I don't speak to him anymore. Mm. Uh, at least at the moment. And I think it's for the better right now. It, uh, my opinion could be different in, let's say, a year or two months or whatever. And I can always change my mind. But at the moment, I don't feel it's the right thing. So completely understand you there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. <clears throat> the parents, we love them. You know, it's like, we love them. I talked to someone recently about that and i told him don't stay in your parents don't stay in your parents house don't stay there Just leave you know i know it's comfortable it's cheap it's uh you don't have to cook and i know these things but at the same time like do, do do you do you know what i mean when i say your father is here asking you so what are you doing now you know it's like, i hate yeah. this question so what do you what do you do? <laughs> I hate to answer this question <laughs> because I'm always, you know, doing different things. And, and if I, I do something and then I kind of identify myself into the thing. So I introduce myself to, uh, I mean, I tell my father that I'm doing this, but then a little bit later I do something a bit different. I feel like, you know, I'm, I know that he thinks that I'm, you know, not doing something uh, productive or whatever, and I don't want this this uh, relationship with my father, whether my father or my mother. Or my mother doesn't really care. Right? But um, I hate what you do. Give me a break. <laughs> I do what I want to do. Yeah. That's it. Right? Yeah, and uh, it's it's really judgmental uh, from them. I mean, uh, I imagine. Are you working from home currently? Absolutely. Yeah. So when you're working at home and they're, they're there, uh, constantly bombarding you with all of these questions. And I've had my mom tell me that I'm not doing a real job. That was like three or four years ago. Because here in Bulgaria, the thing with distant jobs, which is mine basically, uh, working from home wasn't popular uh, right before COVID. I mean, COVID made it uh, a thing that is real. But before that, nobody yeah. cared and everybody said, uh, you know, if you're working from home, you're not really working. You have to be in the, in the office from nine to five. You have to stay there. You can't, you can't work from home. What are you doing? 
you're working on your stupid computer and all of this. That's it. That's it. Definitely. And I love it. Like I love to work from home. I'm, I love it. You yeah. just need, you just need to be, you know, if you need to socialize outside and see friends and be surrounded by people and, and do activities, just make sure you do that for one, one hour a day, at least, you know, you schedule your day to be active outside because otherwise if you stay the, the whole day and the whole week in your home, it's kind of, you know, you feel a little bit um, stuck there. Sometimes I felt that in the beginning when I started uh, my thing. I spent a bit too much time at home. I felt like, we really want to go out, you know? <laughs> yeah. And that makes perfect sense. I mean, we're social creatures. We need communication. And I think, on, for example, I really like breaking patterns at times. So if I, uh, if I get a little too bored with my working space at home, for example, I go to a cafe, or someplace, someplace else that uh, that just refocuses me because uh, yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, sure. There could be distractions there, but if I'm looking for them, there are not distractions for me. It's just that noise that you need to hear from time to time uh, to not go crazy. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. Definitely. So I want to talk about something uh, specific, um, Dimo. Okay. <clears throat> of course. I wanted to talk about a story that happened to me in Greece, which is actually, that was probably the closest, um, the closest place I was when I was next to your country, which is Bulgaria. And um, so I was in the Macedonian region of Greece uh, okay. next to... How is it called? Next to Alexandria, you know. Yeah. Next yeah, to yeah. you know, next to Turkey as well. This 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 area. That's and, right um, next to the border. Exactly. Yeah. A little bit before, yeah. like between yeah, between yeah. Sanropoli and Thessaloniki, you know, between. And um, and I slept outside. I mean, I slept. That was the first time. I slept outside in my travel, but it wasn't as hot as today as these days. It was only one, <laughs> only one autumn. Uh, uh, no, that was um, no, that was autumn. That was spring. That was spring, and uh, I slept outside with my sleeping bag. I just went to the nature, and I slept there. I didn't know where to sleep. You know, I was very adventurous when I traveled. And I slept there. So the story is that I went to bed, the sunset. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot to say, I was in front of the beach. <laughs> in front of, that's important. So I was on top of a hill and I, I have this amazing view of the beach. On the left side, sunset. And on the right side, when I woke up, sunrise. I was like, wow, this is amazing. I didn't have my, the best night. I, like, that was hard to sleep. But, um, but that, that was an amazing story. Like, I slept outside in front of the beach, in front, in the nature. I felt a little bit like I dreamed about weird stuff, like, like people waking me up and, and hitting me. Like, then I woke up like, oh, what's going on? <laughs> Did anybody yeah. wake you up? Um, I think someone came pretty close to me at some point, but, um, I was already, I, I was already, um, I was too far away. They couldn't see me. That was fine. I found a nice oh, spot. Okay. Yeah. So this well, is the good. story. Sunrise, sunset. Uh, that was really amazing. Very good story. Very good experience. Uh, yeah, of course. And this is something that uh, I really like because it was kind of um, kind of the point that uh, I wanted to get together with you and do this live because my series that is on the worst Wednesday is about discussing all of those um, places that made us feel in a certain way 
like just like you told the story and it's a really cool thing it's a really cool experience first and it could help somebody else for example decide to go on a such trip and and have fun in in the in the simplest way because traveling is something that is really important to me i can't stand still at one place and going to a new a new location discovering something new um exactly that feeling of wanderlust it's a cool thing and help helps us um broaden our horizon if you will because if you're if we're staying in the same Absolutely. spot we will never grow we will never grow there we need to see new yeah. new town new cities uh that will make us feel in a different way that than we have felt before and here we go thank you so much for listening i hope you really like this video if you liked it put a like on the bottom comment and subscribe to the channel and you're gonna have a lot of other videos soon. Join me in all different platforms as well, such as Instagram, TikTok. I put a lot of videos everywhere. So join me, the links are on the bottom. Thank you for listening to Travel Talks and see you soon.